Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto finance. And with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here from Stuart Adorati, the chief legal officer at Ripple. And we do see the SEC chair will go to Congress tomorrow and lie by stating that there is such a thing as crypto asset securities market and tokens themselves are investment contracts because we actually seen this get posted by Eleanor Tourette. Now, obviously, the date that he is talking about is the 27th, um, which already passed. Today is the 28th, and he posted this on the 26th. And you might be wondering, Nick, why are you bringing up old news now? Um, a lot of what we are going to go over is just kind of summarization from this meeting, but I want to give you guys a few insights on something that is actually happening and brewing behind the scenes around this. As we look at the second post, perhaps just one representative will read this line from the court's 713-23 decision in the Ripple case, XRP as a digital token, is not in and of itself a contract transaction or scheme that embodies the Howey requirements of an investment contract. Now, we didn't really see that be brought up during the hearing, um, but we did see a few things happen, specifically from Congress. Now, remember that Congress can't technically fire Gary Gensler. They can't, right? Um, but I do think that we are getting closer and closer to the point where, you know, we could scold his entire ego and his entire career, right? Because what he cares about most is becoming that, you know, big star, um, regulator that has stopped out crypto fraud and this and that, but we all know that he hasn't, right? FTX got right through. Um, which that did get brought up as well, which we are going to go over. But first, I want to play this video here because there was quite a bit of lying happening. Brian Donalds actually was one congressman who actually brought it up. And we do see from Nerd Nation Unbox, holy moly, Brian Donalds dropping bombs. I see you've been reading the work we've put out. Do you remember where we left off, you and I? I do. You're a very good questioner, sir. All right. Well, let me refresh. Let me, let's bring some things up. Where we left off was, did you facilitate the payment for the Steele dossier for the Hillary Clinton campaign back in 2016? Because you were the CFO. You acknowledged that. You also said, um, in response to my question, that this payment was not something that I was aware of. Quote, unquote, those are your words. Interesting things have occurred since then. Um, John Podesta actually testified to a committee of Congress, and John Podesta testified uh, to a question about, was Gary, meaning you, was he day-to-day, hands-on, signing every check? And so John Podesta testifies, actually he was under a deposition with a committee here in Congress. He says, yes, I don't know if he signed the checks, but he was there every day, meaning you. So let's circle back. Were you aware of the fact that the Hillary Clinton campaign actually paid for the Steele dossier, which unleashed one of the worst issues of intelligence malfeasance that our nation has ever seen? No, sir, I answered this six months ago, and it's the same answer today, no. You weren't aware of what was going on? Mr. Gensler, I find that very interesting because, you know, if I listen to some of the people in the staff that have left the SEC, you're very aware of everything that is going on. It's actually your MO. You're, you're very hands-on. So you're going to tell the committee right now you had no idea that the Hillary Clinton campaign, of which you were the CFO on, sent money to Perkins Coie for a dossier that was phony that led to the spying on of a presidential campaign in 2016. You were not aware of any of this. Look, sir, as a chief financial officer in a political campaign, I was not aware of what a law firm was doing with some of the money that they got. Now, I find that interesting because in some of your other rhetoric about CFOs in, in, the, in, the, in the public sector, the private sector of our economy, you are very tough on CFOs. You have, you've said on the record on many occasions that CFOs have a fiduciary responsibility to the organizations that they cover, that they should be aware of everything that is going on. So how is that a standard you hold CFOs in the private sector to, but you don't hold yourself to that same standard? That's not a standard that the SEC holds CFOs to. It's about their financials and the, that the financials are uh, put together in accordance with GAAP, and that the numbers are f accurate, uh, and that they're... So did you accurately pay for the steel requires. dossier out of the Hillary Clinton campaign? Sir, I learned about that after, way after President Trump was a president and Hillary Clinton was a private citizen. All right, well, let's move on. We'll probably circle on that another time. And by the way, he does come back to it. There's over about five minutes um, over on Twitter that you guys can watch of just this entire interaction. But also outside of this, you guys probably know Steven Neryoff at this current moment in time because there's been a lot brought up. But we do see, seems like there is confusion that agencies are still here to serve the people. They've evolved to protect government and institutions from the people. The SEC Gov protects financial incumbents, FBI keeps citizens in line, and of course the Justice Department protects all other agencies. Overhaul needed. And, uh, 
Here we have from Bitcoin Magazine, Justin, the U.S. congressman tells SEC chair Gary Gensler his bill would fire him and restructure the SEC. I wish the Biden administration would say you're fired. Congress hopefully will. And yes, hopefully they will. But like I've said, it's going to be a lot more challenging for them to do so. Because again, this administration, well, I'll leave you guys to that thought process. But let's speed up to 1.25 and let's play the clip. And it, it introduces a major questions doctrine. And you told Mr. Barr that you received tons of feedback on your proposed ESG disclosure rules, uh, feedback that should make clear that the proposal for ESG disclosure is a major question. And it should make clear that you don't have the legal authority to do that. So I'd ask you to knock it off, cease and desist, and work with this body to pass a law if you want to regulate something. You know, frankly, your time as chairman has highlighted two problems, a Gary Gensler problem and a structural flaw in the SEC. And as I told you in April, I proposed a solution called the SEC Stabilization Act. Uh, you're, you're making the case for this bill easier every day you are acting as the chairman uh, by doing rulemaking after rulemaking without any regard to the impact of these rules, or maybe that's the feature for you, I don't know. Um, but it's having a massive impact on our markets. I mean, we have markets that truly are the envy of the world, and why would you disrupt them um, you know, with, with processes that are driving capital out of our markets? Not because to avoid our laws, but to find some place where they can get clarity, where they can work with a regulator and get a decision and a path forward. So instead of selectively applied, you, you are short, you're not providing clarity with a rule that's evenly applied. You're intentionally short in comment periods to limit feedback. And the courts have even called this arbitrary and capricious. You're pushing a, a woke political and social agenda, and I think abusing your role in the authority of the SEC uh, as cover. So uh, you know, I think fundamentally, uh, the SEC Stabilization Act would remove the role of chairman. Uh, it would preserve uh, the current commissioners, but it would add a, a, a sixth commissioner. So there would be uh, no more than three from any one political party. And so that would provide a path that would make the SEC do what you're avoiding. Frankly, you're front-running Congress, you're front-running the courts, you're front-running even the own administration, and no one has held you to account for that. I mean, I wish the Biden administration would say you're fired, uh, but the, the list of folks they need to do that for is long. Congress hopefully will with the SEC Stabilization Act. I yield. So much time to expire. Now, of course, we hope that this act does get passed. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a... Uh going to be something that's going to be rough to get past if i'm going to be honest with you guys but like i said you know at, at this current moment in time i think it's so clear that gary gensler is is not fit for the job for the position and um, i honestly think that this is all by plan to be completely honest with you guys and i've talked about this many times in the past as well uh we know gary gensler is a part of some organizations that are already working on global crypto frameworks i think that all of this is some big show if it's not then i would be surprised um, but a lot of this can be connected right back to the FSB with the IMF, the BIS, the G20, which I've been outlining probably for about three, four months now. Um, and it, it, it's something that we really need to look over because we already know that the plan is in place. Um, could Gary Gensler, like him or hate him, just be one big sh part of the show? 100%. Um, but outside of this, we even see a lot of these congressional members uh, really kind of homing on with the idea that Gary Gensler is not, you know, fit. He's protecting the biggest institutions. He's, you know, clearing out uh, the competition to these incumbent bankers. And we even see like he's made a career of being relentlessly loyal to the largest institutions in America at the clear expense of innovation and competition in everyday Americans. And, you know, this is something that really needs to look be looked over because we know Gary Gensler has a massive net worth. I mean, when you actually look at this individual's net worth. And by the way, a lot of people have been trying to figure out how he's gotten to this point where he's worth 41 to 119 million dollars, yet nobody can really find out where the money is flowing in from. But like I said, the the main reason why I think that Gary is a part of the plan is because we already know that he was instructing classes in MIT about blockchain technology and digital currencies and all of a sudden he's handpicked to be the next SEC chair, and then he's attacking crypto and he's going after crypto, slowing things down. Why is that? We already know that global crypto regulations are, you know, planned for the end of 2025 with the FSB, which Gary Gensler is actually a part of. In my opinion, this could very well just be all part of the plan. And I do think that, you know, his net worth should be looked over. I think that we need an investigation there because it's it's astonishing how he's worth this much. 
again, a lot of these members of uh of Congress are also worth quite a bit of money. But at the end of the day, listen, as we really kind of look at what's happening, I think that there's going to be an investigation if this isn't all part of the plan. Um, outside of this, we already know that the SEC has failed tremendously. We know Gary has been failing tremendously. Um, and even this clip here with Patrick McHenry really kind of talking about uh, the losing streak and even the threat of subpoena on documents related to FTX, I think that this is clear that they are going to most likely try to target Gary as much as possible. Uh, the standardization um, act from Congress is a big one to really kind of look at. But listen closely to this clip and I will talk more about this. Third, your efforts to choke off the digital asset ecosystem, which has created real harm for consumers in our markets, is clear to all. You said the law is clear. And by the way, yes, they have caused tremendous harm to the retail sector. $15 billion right out of the gate once they dropped the Ripple case. That was big. And it wasn't Gary Gensler who dropped that, of course, but it was still on the SEC. $15 billion in retail sector damages initially. How much after the fact were caused? Well, you guys could probably come to that conclusion with just FTX alone. But your actions have created more confusion and lasting damage. Chair Gensler, you've also said your goal is consumer protection. Yet your actions have pushed legitimate digital asset activities outside of regulated financial institutions where consumers are best protected. On one hand, we've seen bipartisan votes in Congress, in this committee, to provide clear rules of the road and real consumer protection. And on the other, we've seen your ad hoc regulatory regulation by enforcement approach to digital assets on a losing streak in the courts. You refuse to be transparent with Congress regarding your interactions with FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried. That's the investigation we started last Congress. Finally, your lack of responsiveness to this committee's legitimate oversight continues to be unacceptable. And I want to finish here. In February, the committee made multiple requests for documents to the Securities Exchange Commission. This is normal congressional oversight. Yet seven months later, the committee has not received a single non-public document that was not part of a FOIA production. As I said, our patience is wearing thin. The SEC is not above the law, nor is it unique. Other financial regulators have routinely complied with congressional oversight. So let me be clear. I do not want to be the first chairman of this committee to issue a subpoena to the Securities Exchange Commission. And you should not want to be the first SEC chair to receive a congressional subpoena. Either we find a path forward where the SEC recognizes Congress is a co-equal branch of government and is responsive to our oversight duties, or my option is to issue a subpoena. It's time for you to consider the lasting consequences of your action, uh, your actions, and what that means to the Securities Exchange Commission's reputation long term. While your time in this role may be temporary, the repercussions for your actions may be permanent for the agency. I yield back. So yeah, I mean, we obviously are looking forward to the day where we do see a lot of these documents coming out. Uh, we look forward to the day where the truth finally is set free. Um, I also think that as we look at Stephen Neryoff around ETHgate, I, I think that that needs to be looked at as well, because I think outside of just Gary Gensler, I think a lot of the past and previous members of the SEC are also going to be really kind of targeted through uh, a lot of those documents seeing the light of day and a lot of the information coming out. And I think that we're closer and closer uh, to the truth being set free. Um, again, this is why I focus on Johnny Deaton. I focus on Stephen Neryoff and I focus on what's actually happening um, around ETHgate because I think ETHgate is much larger than what most people are uh, really kind of hinting at. And I think that it really kind of starts with the SEC. I think that the SEC has been a part of this journey forever. I think that a lot of the regulators were bought and paid for. I mean, when you see net worths in the 40s to hundreds of millions of dollars, it's kind of impossible to come to that conclusion or not to con uh, come to that conclusion. Um, so, you know, outside of that, I think I think it was a big, big moment um, for the entire crypto community uh to really kind of see gary gensler and the sec being targeted and i mean again we've already kind of started to see this back six months ago right 
Um, I do want to see something come out from this act, right? Like this bill is a big bill. The problem is, is that is it going to get passed? Are we going to get Gary Gensler out of the SEC? It's highly doubtful. And even if we do, he's still a part of the FSB, right? And the Financial Stability Board, they're already working with the IMF, the BIS, and the G20 um, on crypto global crypto frameworks. So even if the SEC did drop Gary tomorrow, we still have to deal with him from the FSB. And we already know that the FSB, by the way, gave Ripple the green light to comment on global crypto frameworks um, back in December of 2022 um, before the SEC lost in court against Ripple on XRP. So if we actually look at things, I believe that Ripple is playing a part, of the, part in the game and so is Gary Gensler, so is the SEC and um, even the FSB is too. So we got to really kind of question everything. It's hard not to be a tinfoil hat wearer at this current moment in time, but I mean, everything that we have seen kind of led us down the road that all of this is basically by plan. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.